Hello and welcome to this tutorial video where I'm going to show you how I made this patch of palm trees for jungle terrain. I use these in Malaya for my 15mm figures but they could be quite easily used for 28 mils, 20 mil, uh, most sizes really, probably all the way down to 10 mil. Uh, but in this video I'm going to show you exactly the steps I've taken to create this uh, step by step and you should hopefully end up with something like this yourself. So let's dive in. So the first thing that we have to do is deal with the base. Now this is mounted on a CD, you could use any kind of thing you want really but I'm, I'm using CDs for these because it's a reasonably good size. Uh, they're nice and solid, you can see here how oh, it is nice and solid on the bo bottom, already flat already cut uh, to a shape but you could use any kind of any kind of base you want like MDF board or something like that but for this purposes here today we're going to be using a CD so I'll take an old blank CD the good thing about CDs is most of them are pretty much out of date these days you know with cloud storage and flash drives and things so I've got piles of these things kicking about use them for terrain features they're much much more uh, useful than in computers and I'm, the next thing I need to do because we got this hole in the center I just need to fill that in quickest easiest way to do that is just get some tape any type of tape this is parcel tape it's quite thin literally just stick that over the top there and then because you've got this sticky part on the back of it here you can either paint that or cover it with something or sand or something just to get rid of the stickiness or even quicker stick another tinier piece of tape over the top and that will be flat enough not to create you know, a wobble when the base is down and I don't worry too much about this tape here being ridged because we're now about to cover this the next thing to do is to, take, is to cover this in your basing material uh, there's a few ways of doing this one of the quickest ways is using this Vallejo earth texture, it's an acrylic uh, textured paint basically uh, it's relatively cheap, I've had this for quite a while, I've used quite a lot of it as you can see and I've done tons of uh, projects with this stuff it's uh, quite a thick paste, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's got very very thin sand or grit in it just to give it that tiny little bit of a, of a, uh, a feel to it, a little bit of texture and it's acrylic which is great so it washes off in water literally all you need to do is get a biggish brush and take blobs of it and paint it onto your CD base now don't worry too much about getting this perfect because what we'll do is once this is dry we, we can go over this with some paint as well so we can quite easily quickly patch up any areas that we've missed base now textured. Uh, this says it takes about 45 minutes to dry uh, I would probably leave it a little bit longer just wash that off in some clean water and make sure you get all of the, the lumps out because it can make a mess and just to show you exactly what this is again it's the this is the earth texture acrylic by Vallejo uh, brown earth there are different different colors for this one but this is the one I like because it's quite neutral So while you're waiting for your base to dry, <clears throat> you can start moving on to dealing with some of the uh, palm trees themselves. Now these are dead cheap ones that I picked up in China. You can get quite a lot of these for next to nothing. They don't look fantastic at the moment, but we're going to do a few improvements on them just to make them look a little bit better than they are. You can go all the way on this, or you can do this quite lightly as I'm going to do, because nobody's really going to be taking uh, a great... Uh, a great interest in them, they, they, it's more about show really. Um, the thing is when you buy them they come in these colours, I'll put links for these in the description, but you buy them uh, they're in this lightish brown and a quite a darkish green, there's not really a great deal of uh, contrast or anything on these, so I'm just going to add a couple of shades to these. First of all they've got some 
mold lines which I just want to get rid of very quickly with my knife take the edge of your knife scrape it down those mold lines nicely on these trees you've actually got coconuts on them I'm sure you could probably find some without coconuts on but I'm doing this for Malaya and when I worked out in Singapore I actually ate coconuts off trees off palm trees so I know they exist out there so I'm quite happy for these to stay on just a little extra bit of fun there as I say I mean I'm using these for Singapore and for Malaya but uh, you could quite easily these could be adapted for any any jungle terrain including sci-fi terrain all kinds of things you could even use in this case you could even use you know uh, the Western European trees So, now we've got rid of the plastic of these, the next thing I need to do is to just to do a little bit of touching up on the on the fronds, on the leaves themselves, on the palms, and then we're going to do something with the bark as well. Very simple, I'm going to take a yellow paint, any yellows, this is uh, Decor Art, a cheap sun yellow, a dead cheap paint that I use for most of my yellows pretty mid yellow yellow and you can see here in my palette and then we're going to put some on the end of a brush wipe it off this is for dry brushing so there's still a little yellow left when you run it back over and what you do, literally pull the brush down the shape of the fronds and you can just see it's picking up that yellow paint on those fronds and just giving them an ever so slightly better look than the flat green they were. So just like this. And now compare the two. You see already it's looking less plasticky than its friend here. So we do exactly the same uh, when dry brushing just try to get as much off off the brush as possible and again just we're just picking up the shape of those fronds just giving them a bit of a an extra dimension So then we now move on to our trunks and again as you can see in this case these are quite light light brown trunks uh, there's some detail on them but I want to pick up even more of that and the way we do that is using this uh, army painter quick shade this is strong tone it's quite dark give it a good mix put it into your into your dish over here and literally holding on to the bottom here paint this over just going up and down Make sure the entire trunk is covered and you'll see this just kind of then sits in the recesses and you can see those trunks a little bit better there and although not perfect it certainly looked a lot better I think that's one side take your next one That's it. Stick those to one side to dry. We'll come back 
and continue on with the base. So I've left the base to dry overnight and as you can see it is now stippled and quite uh, lumpy with the uh, texture paint so that's worked pretty well. I did have to go over a couple of places uh, another time just because I could see some of the silver of the CD showing through. However, now that's done and that's all dried, what I've done now is I've actually attached the CD to an old paint pot just using some blue tack. This will now just give me something to hold on to while I'm painting it so I don't get a mess all over the rest of my hands while this continues. I probably should have done it earlier but we're here now. So the next thing I want to do is basically just give this a bit of a shade and I'm using this, the quick, uh, the, the Army Painters Quick Shade Strong Tone Washers. There's different types of these washers. This one works pretty well with brown. It's, it's a brownish colour itself, quite dark. And what will that will do is sit in the recesses of the textured paint and just give it a little bit more definition that's really what you're looking for here a little bit more definition uh, that's probably all I'm going to do when it comes to painting this you can actually dry brush it later on but uh, I'm not going to bother I don't think in this case so we take our brush I'm going to make sure this brush is actually wet because I want just to thin this uh, army shader stuff down just to go a little bit further and literally all you're doing is painting this on and you can see straight away it's already picking up the highlights of the textured paint it's sitting in the recesses you're getting the the texture coming through a lot more in a lot more definition there And that is it. Uh, this stuff doesn't take very long to dry. What I will do though is I will stick it over on the radiator, uh, leave it a few hours and then that will be good to come back to. So it looks quite dark in the shop but uh, in real life it's not so bad. Uh, I will actually dry brush this just to take some of that edge off it later on but that's the next stage. So now this is dried. Didn't take very long. Uh, you can see that the Army Painter Quick shade has given this just ever so slightly a little bit more of a dimension than it was before. It was quite flat and dull. However, what I want to do now is just to bring out some more of these uh, peaks and troughs and just give it a little bit of a dry brush. And I'm using Vallejo's Khaki. This is very good for dry brushing mud because obviously Khaki is a mud colour. So I put some of this into our palette, Let's take a dry brush, I do apologise if you can hear the bin man outside, it's bin day. We load up our dry brush and literally take off as much as we can of the paint itself off the brush using an old cloth, an old cleaning, uh, cleaning cloth here, I'm using kitchen towel. And then taking the base literally run the brush over the top there and you can see you should be able to see that that is now just bringing out some of the peaks and just giving it that extra dimension of colour So I've got it all there, all the way across, all done. And that, as I say, just gives you that little extra dimension. Uh, a lot of this base is actually going to be covered in grass anyway, so it's not a major issue. You can leave it if you want, but I just want I want to have some of these parts sticking through the grass so you'll be able to see them. So now that's done. The base is 99% done at this point. However, before we continue on with the rest of it, I want to protect this, so I'm now going to varnish it and let's take my spraying my spray box here use one of these just to protect yourself and I'm using uh, the Windsor & Newton 
professional matte varnish. Make sure it's professional. This is the best stuff that I've ever found. I've uh, varnished figures for years and years and years, and this is by far the best I've ever used. Uh, things like Humbrol and other uh, varnishes, Games Workshop varnishes sometimes frost up. This has never done that for me. So this is good stuff. Give it a good old shake. Put the top back on. And give it a good coat and matte varnish. And again, we leave this to dry. This will probably be dry within an hour or so, uh, but again I would recommend just leaving it overnight just to make sure 100%, leave it somewhere warm uh, or in a, a relatively warm room and that will be perfect to work on for the next stage. So the next phase, while I'm waiting for all the other bits and pieces to dry, is the, uh, the, the plant life that I'm going to put on the bottom of the base. And these are uh, aquarium plants which were next to nothing, plastic aquarium plants. These are about two pound for uh, two sets of these and about the same again two pound for, for these ones here. And they come on these grids, plastic grids you can see, and you literally pluck them off when you do their this big. So they're like little bushes and they will end up uh, on the base of the uh, the CD and just add a little bit more flavour, a bit more jungle look to the to the whole thing. However, as you can see these are quite bright, quite bright green, a little bit too bright for, for what I want them for. You can leave them like that if you want to but I think that's just a little bit too much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these ones on the base, so I'll take those off now, and I want to put a couple of these ones, same again, these are quite bright as well, so what I'm wanting to do is dull these down, literally again these just pluck off, like so, these are quite nice because they've got quite nice big fronds on them, that you can mess about with, and these will be stuck down. Uh, these ones have got these little, uh, little bits of extra plastic in the centre there, so I'm just going to trim that off first of all before I do anything. It just doesn't look right, it just looks like a piece of plastic stuck up. We can easily cover that with static grass and something else later on when we come to do the fine detailing. So I'll just chip that bit off there. Again what I'll do is I'll put the description, I'll put the uh, links for stuff like this in the in the description so you can get to it quite easy but as I say these are next to nothing really for uh, for the amount that you get and how useful they are for this particular build uh, you know they don't have to just be used on these this kind of terrain you can use them for all all kinds so <clears throat> as I said they're a little bit bright so what I want to do is dull them down a bit so I'm taking some uh, Vallejo flat earth I'm going to put some of this into my pot here and a very wet brush really thin down this paint so that it you can see there when I put it onto the white you can actually see the white through it a little bit thinner than that even and then literally it's just going to be a case of painting this over the top of these just to give it a very thin brownish wash. Very simple procedure and you can see already it's just dulled the green, the yellowish green down enough. See the difference between those two, one done one not. And this won't take very long to dry at all. You could arguably do this after you've finished the piece but it's a lot harder. I did it before, it's easier going to be doing it to do it in this situation now before we get any further on with the with the build. So there we go, that's those ones done. And then same again, this one through the big frond, just make sure that this flatter stuff is 
is nice and runny and it just needs to be a very thin paint over the top you see there again I mean what you're doing there also is just adding a little bit of contrast onto the green as well depending on how you want your your plants to look you can do this as thin or as thick paint as you like and even if you wanted to again you know you might want to dry brush the end of some of these these fronds in yellow just to give them a, an extra layer of of color I'm not going to bother because I'm going to be happy enough with these in brown like that and then that's those leave them to dry uh, they won't take very long at all and then it's going to be sticking everything together so now we've got the aquarium plants dry <coughs> the uh, palm trees are all dry they're ready the base is all dry varnished and ready so I'm now going to move on to sticking everything down onto the base itself it's a relatively simple thing to do but you're going to need a few different bits and pieces uh, I've got here a glue gun which is already warmed up uh, very useful if you're doing any kind of terrain modeling uh, this is really good stuff to use I've also got some static grass uh, this is I think woodland scenic summer stuff it's got a big box of that, I'm using that in a second. I've also got some PVA glue, uh, which I will show you what I'm going to do with in a second. Uh, and, as I say, the uh, the various bits and pieces that I'm going to stick onto the board. Well, the first thing you can notice is that these palm trees have got this little nub at the bottom, that's for sticking them into uh, softer material. Uh, I did think about doing something like that, sticking them into the base, but you don't really need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally remove that, from each one of these palm trees first of all using a very sharp knife just literally take off as much as you can as flat as you can at the bottom of the base because you're going to need it to stand up on when we glue it to the base so I'm going to do this with every one of these and that's it they're all ready to go so <clears throat> we get our glue gun uh, leave it on for a little bit so it's nice and hot so the, the glue will flow and literally squeeze out a blob being as careful as you try, try not to make it too stringy there is a method to get rid of the stringiness but I've not yet found it take your palm tree and plant it in the blue glue blob This only takes a couple of seconds to set, so that's your first one. Now I'd like to have this palm tree with another smaller palm tree next to it. I'm going to put in another little blob just in here. Don't worry too much about these blobs at this point because these will be covered in a second anyway. So I'm going to put another smaller tree in right next to that one so you've got two trees growing next to each other and then what I'll do is take my PVA glue squirt out a bit onto my palette water it down a little bit paint around the base of the tree over the glue that I've just put on if you do this now rather than wait until the very end it's a lot easier because you can actually get into where the tree and the glue is and my tester ones have found it quite difficult to to do this take our static grass you can do this with a static grass applicator or as simple as I'm doing it here just by putting it on then give it a blow and the grass will stand up 
to the couple of spots I missed. I just want to give those a little extra PVA on them. And then there they're covered. And we continue that for the other trees. palm trees in place, nice and easy. So the next step is to do our other bushes, these ones here, the aquarium bushes. So I'm going to have a couple on this side. Strings cool down a little so they snap. We take any one of our bush that we like, stick it in place. Covering up the the glue gun glue, the hot glue. So I'll take it our PVA again. And yet again, just making sure that we cover all of the glue. Still haven't finished here yet, this section. What I want to do is add a few more tropical looking plants. And what I've got here is, I bought this at a show a long time ago. It's horse hair that's been dyed green. Now I can't exactly remember where I got it from, but it's great stuff. So if you can get a hold of some, I'll try and find it and I will put the description. I'll put a link in the description if I can find it. But what you can see is you can pull it to pieces and I got this initially for hedges, but it actually works very well as plant life. And you just need to twist it, tease it open a little bit, like this. Do the same. So I'm going to pull a few of these out. So I want to use this as kind of bushes and uh, more foliage to go in there in the bottom again just to mix things up a little bit. I want to take out the stuff that the more you tease it the more it looks like something growing. So that's quite nice really. And this again is done exactly the same way as the other bits. Just want to get right in here. More difficult to get into because I'm sticking it in the centre. Out with the string on, get rid of that stringy glue. And then this will sit right in that blob. 
blob of hot glue right there. Be careful not to burn your fingers like I just did. And then that just gives you an extra additional bit of foliage to play with. could finish there if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is again I'm just going to add some more static grass now to the rest of the base just to break it up, break up the shape as much as possible. And I'm going to put this on in pretty random places. I want to get some around the bottom of these bushes I've just put on but I also want it across the entire base as well. So again, just so I'm covering up as much of the hot glue as possible, just to disguise things here. So the very last thing that I have to use here are these grass tufts and flowers. These I bought again from eBay. Uh, you can make your own using static grass and various other bits and pieces. I don't bother, let somebody else do that. Uh, I ain't got time for that. So I buy these relatively cheap. Uh, you get quite a lot for your price. Uh, take some tweezers, take off any of your grass tufts that you want to stick on and then just stick these on in random locations. <coughs> the good thing about these is they are sticky as soon as they come off the, the wax paper. It just gives a little bit of height to the static grass that you've got in there already. quite happy with that. You can put as many or as little of these on as you want. Uh, I think that's enough just to break up the colour, just to break up the shape. And there you have it. <coughs> that is another piece of jungle terrain. Uh, the actual build time was probably no more than about an hour. You could spend a bit longer if you wanted to really detail various bits of it, like the trees or things, uh, or the, 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 the fronds if you want to give them kind of different colours. But I'm happy with that. That will go on the table when uh, we're playing jungle games and adds another dimension. Mm -hmm.